Uh, g'day everyone, it's NQ Explorers again. Uh, another military rally hunt today. We're uh, up again in the um, campsites of the 7th and uh, 9th Australian Divisions where they camped in 1943-44, um, uh, late 42, after their return from the Middle East campaign against the Africa Corps before deploying to New Guinea, Bougainville and the island campaigns uh, to the north. So this was an encampment and training area. Um, so there was around uh, 30,000 troops in this area spread over a very large area. A lot of the campsites are like this these days, just natural bushland, completely undisturbed since 1945, so um, always a good day out. Usually come with a few good old military relics and if you're lucky a couple of coins, so um, we'll get into it and hopefully we'll have some nice finds to show you. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll be back soon. I was just pushing my way through this bit of scrub here and I found the uh, remains of one of the old army fireplaces. You can see the concrete, little square piece of concrete, the chimney's gone. There's another one further down in the bush down in there, but um, this is one of the old uh, camp kitchens. You can see it's been built just out of uh, you know, lo local bush rocks and uh, slapped up with a bit of um, concrete. I mean these things weren't that temporary because the, the troops were here for two or three years and there were so many troops coming through here it was worth uh, putting up a uh, substantial sort of camp. So. Anyway, I've just got another button find in here. We'll go in and have a look at that. Okay, about three inches. I've got a beauty here. See, it just, I've just revealed it from the side of the hole. Tunic button. And she is in ripper condition, that one. You can see the Australia on there. Shanks at 90 degrees with the button. Beautiful. I might have a maker's name on the back. I think Stokes in Melbourne uh, made a lot of these. The uh, Stokes used to make a lot of those uh, penny tokens in the 1800s. So, I'll just get a little clean. And I'll see if I can get a maker's name and all subtitle, but it's definitely a uh, tunic button. That one, good one. Well, there's that button I just found. I had to show you this again. Have a look at that. It's still got some of the original black enamelling uh, from its uh, when it was manufactured. I haven't cleaned it too much. It's got the dirt off it. You can see it says Australian Military Forces. But look on the back. It's actually still got the fabric from the uniform. After 70 years lying in the bush. That's amazing. Well, what about that? That's a great little find. And that's just beautiful condition. Look at that. Good one. On we go. Well, I just got that last button over in that area over there near that uh, camp kitchen foundation. And uh, this these series of drains dug through. I don't know if they're natural gullies or the army dug these for drainage uh, between all the tents. It's kind of a sandy uh, granite material here. We come up through that drain. I got a really, really high tone signal here. I might do a live dig and we'll see what we come up with. It's, uh, it's saying it's a coin sized object. Nearly onto it there. We'll just pull the dirt back. Could be, could be anything. Tar pole and loop. But it's ringing it pretty high. Right, we'll see what we've got here. Okay, it's in the heap. It looks to be a penny. You see it there? Just pulled it out. That thing, the detector just went off when it came up over the hill. It picked that up. Outside, one thing about the GTI, it picks up coins outside the, the um, diameter of the coin. You don't have to actually swing across the coin. So there we go. That'll be a World War II penny. I'll give him a clean and get a date off him. Back shortly. There she is. It's an absolutely immaculate, if you can use that word for a coin, 43 penny. And the reason that it's in such good condition is uh, it would be new dropped because uh, these camps are here 43, 44. By the end of the war of 45, they're all gone. So the coin couldn't have been more than a year old, and it's a really uh, granular soil. And I'm on a little ridge line here between these gullies, so it's well drained. No, uh, no copper cancer or anything on that. It's just a beautiful coin. Okay, we'll keep hunting up along these little ridge lines, not far from this camp kitchen. Okay, that's where I got that penny earlier on. Just behind me, I got that little tube of cream. I'm still on this little ridge line between these gullies. Uh, up here, I've got a red hot signal ring out really high, saying it's a coin size object. I haven't done anything at all to the soil yet. As you can see, it's not real easy to swing a coil, but you can, you can get in there. So there. Yeah, 
just in front of that rock, just like about here, it's uh, saying there's a coin or something of similar conductivity. So I'll just do a dig on it. Here we go. I'd say the way that's ringing, it's going to be another penny. Normally, hope on the GTI I give you about a mid tone. And the, the pennies and the bigger silvers, the shillings and the florins go up higher. Okay. She's still in there. Okay, hopefully you can see that hole. I'll just keep digging. Notice it lack of pro pointer. Makes it easier that pro pointer for sure. Still in there. Getting down a bit now for three or four inches. It could be a uh, a badge, a brass badge. They ring up high like the big copper coins. Okay. She's out of the scrape. It's in here somewhere. Rock. Okay. It's got to be here just somewhere. Close boy. And what's this here? Oh no, why? It's a florin. A florin. Hi <laughs> Rock. I've got a florin. I'm not up to your standard. 12 or 13. Check that out. Big silver. No way. Oh that's beautiful. That'll be a sterling. I'll get a date off him and I'll get back to you shortly. Well there she is. Check the condition of that coin. It's a 1942. Sterling silver 925 florin. And that, the coat of arms, has no wear whatsoever on it. Once again, that was probably dropped just about new. Two bob. What a beauty. I really thought that was going to be a penny. But I'm glad I did a live dig on that. 1942 silver florin. Magic. There'll be more coins here. We'll just keep hunting up this little ridge line. Well, I just got that florin up that ridge there a bit further. And I just got this, in this hole here, I've got this. It's a... It's got a pin on the back. Obviously it's some sort of badge or maybe the mounting for a badge. I'll clean the front and I'll see if I can get any information on it. Put a little hole there. I don't know what that is. Okay, we'll be back shortly with some information if I can find any, out anything off it. Well, I've just realised what this is and it's a, a fabulous find for me anyway. It's a metal ribbon mount. You can see that there's been a, just a single uh, ribbon on there. Probably a uh, one of the um, diggers up here might have had a um, metal ribbon from earlier on. Maybe you'd be an ex-World War One digger. But um, that's a metal ribbon mount off your uniform. Magic stuff. Too bad the old ribbons rotted away. Obviously it would have done over all this time, but he would have been a little bit uh, devastated to have lost that. This little ridge line's really producing the targets. I'll just keep hunting up and down here. They're ready to go. And the Japs know it's coming. The bombs and artillery fire warned them of that. Men move silently to positions. They know what the next few minutes may mean. An attack against fixed lines of fire on Razorback ridges means casualties. It's those last moments of waiting that are tough. There's one of those bloodwood trees I came across in one of these army camps up here last year I showed you, but this time I've got my HD camera. This time you can really see we can see what's called a bloodwood. That's the sap of the tree. Looks like someone's given a big wound there and it's bled right down the tree. And you can actually boil up the um, flowers when they flower. You can boil up the flowers and make a sweet tea out of it. I'm not sure if you can actually eat the sap. I'd like to find out about that, but you can see what I call a bloodwood tree. Okay, on we go. I was just uh, near this old fir tree and I got a really weird signal. Um, the reason was it was masked by this root. You can see this large root here. You get the signal on this side. So I had to dig this side and it looks like I disturbed up under this area here. It looks like I got a coin. Came out of there. Oh, it's a halfpenny. Good one. That's an old Cromwell halfpenny. Even better. 
beauty. Um, we'll get a date off it. That's a King George V. Or it might be a 6, KG6, because the 38s went over to the... Um, just 1938s, we still had... Uh, these, they went to the kangaroo in 38. So it could be a 38 or it could be a KG5. I'll just get a date off it. I'll get back shortly. So that was that was sort of lodged up under that root, that uh, that halfpenny. So anyway, I was lucky to get that one. On we go. Well, there she is. It's the old Commonwealth Australia halfpenny, 1929. So it's a KG5. Once again, lovely condition. Um, I haven't cleaned up the king on the other side. He's still got a bit of dirt sticking to his uh, old face there. So uh, that's a nice old coin, that one, 1929. In good condition once again. All right, on we go. Well, I reckon a bit of research and recon pays off. I'm going to suggest that I'm the first bloke into this old army camp. The stuff I'm picking up, and there's a lot of targets. And check this out a surface find. It's just an old army uh, enamel Dixie from World War II. Just lying on the su a surface find. Mm, don't know about the cup of tea you're going to have in that one, but anyway, um, that's what you call a bottomless cup, I suppose. But that's a, that's a ripper. Old enamel mug, good one. I'll just, uh, I'd say I'm in the tent lines here, so we'll just keep uh, in this small area and we'll see what we come up with. Like I said, I'm keep getting those little uh, tubes of antiseptic cream, or whatever they are, so obviously a lot of that, uh, unless it was a medical tent, I don't know, who knows. I'll keep going. Well, I just found that enamel mug on the surface. Look what I've stumbled across here. Some kind of little rubbish dump, army rubbish dump. There's more enamel mugs, two of them, bottle bases. And look at this. Bits of webbing. No <laughs> way. Don't need a metal detector now. A little of glass here. What's this little bottle here? This is uh, something, something written on the bottom of that. Bits of webbing. Tarp loops or cam loops. There's bottles, uh, broken bottle shards all up through here. I'll run the detector over this. They might have thrown a coin in there and they're dumping all their rubbish. Oh, it's a little rubbish dump, eh? Good one. OK, well, I'll just start around this spot. Spit and polish, new army style. Hardship, jet bombers, malaria, mosquitoes that pick you up and throw you down. Nothing can dampen that Aussie spirit. Not even water. Well, I've been getting a lot of questions about snakes. Uh, yes, we have snakes in Australia. Most of them are poisonous. Some are deadly. And this is the sort of country you've got to be really careful in. Obviously, this long grass, particularly around uh, October, November, that's the breeding season, and they're very active. We get the western taipan up here, the big brown snake, red belly black, death adders. What a great name for a snake. Um, thing is, some of these snakes are very aggressive, others aren't. And they, uh, if you're making a, generally by, you know, metal detecting makes quite a bit of noise, just, just the vibration of your feet on the ground and the machine making a noise. So um, that's why one of the reasons we don't use headphones on these hunts is it because uh, you really got to be aware of your surroundings and the headphones just cut out too much of that uh, what's going on around you and you, you really got to know so um, we and, and we like to have that the bell tones going and that sort of keeps the snakes at bay we've had a few exciting encounters with snakes none recently um, if we ever find a big snake in an area we just go to another area you can have it <laughs> so anyway that's a that's the story with snakes this end of the winter not so much they're pretty dormant you get the occasional python, they're pretty sleepy and they're not going to hurt you, but um, the poisonous snakes more in the spring, early summer period of the, of the, in the hot hot weather. But um, you just got to make a bit of noise. So um, anyway, um, none here today, luckily. Um, but you just got to gotta be on your alert all the time because they can be anywhere. Righto, on we go. Check this out, more relics. I thought that looked like a fireplace up there. I just thought it caught me on the left. Look, a couple of old uh, enamel plates. They'll be old army plates. So I'm obviously in a tent area here. Yep, look like they've been there 70 years. A couple of bushfires have gone through them. Amazing st surface finds. I mean, this camp I reckon is untouched. But anyway, we'll see. We'll just keep continuing up this uh, hill back to where we were earlier on. The last one was an inconsistent signal. It was under this root. And out come this lovely little silver threepence. I'll just. Uh, it's a uh, wheat. The sheaf of wheat threepence. You can probably see the date there. It'll be a sterling. I'll uh, just give it a quick clean and come back with a date on that. So that's a good little find. Another little silver. Well, there she is. Lovely, it's a lovely little uh, 1938 threepence, King George VI. Lovely condition too. And so that's a little 925 uh, silver. Okay, on we go. 
Oh, I just came across another one of these old camp kitchens in this sort of cleared area. Um, there's sort of a flat area below it where the um, the mess tent would have been. Could have been on timber stumps actually, but and just up behind it, it was quite a deep target. I refilled the hole since, uh, but um, it's a webbing buckle. Still got a bit of the fabric on it, which shows you why the um, copper coins, bronze coins, um, last so well up here when fabric can last 70 years in the ground, well the coins aren't going to rot away. So. I'll just keep going up this hill. There's a flat spot there. It looks like there would have been a tent there because it's been sort of benched out of the hillside just along here. We're going to have a look up in there. There's that camp kitchen once again and uh, 15 metres from there, harmonica reed. So the diggers had a bit of entertainment at night. Some fellow on his harmonica. Good one. Okay, let's uh, maintain the search in this area. Out of this uh, shallow scrape here, I get this bizarre little find. It's a cut halfpenny. About a quarter of a halfpenny. Less than a farthing, I suppose. I can see it says George de Gracia on there, so I'll check the other side. <laughs> I'll see if I can get the date off it. But I'll probably be lucky. Right, oh, on we go. Unbelievably, on the other side, it's the piece with the date. It's a 1912 uh, halfpenny, an old George V, but uh, oh, it'll go in the collection. It'll do. That's a coin or piece of one. <laughs> Silver run continues, we're having a good day here. The machine just went rank on this, it was very shallow and we've got a beautiful little sixpence. Uh, we'll give it a clean and get a date, it'll definitely be a sterling. Wartime coin, probably a San Francisco or a Denver. Okay, we'll get a date and we'll be back shortly. Well there she is, it's a beautiful little 1936 sixpence, King George V. There we go, that's a sterling silver sixpence. Um, Quite a shallow target. It must have been because the signal was, uh, it was gave a huge signal, as the silvers do. But um, that's a nice one. We've got a, a florin and a threepence and a sixpence. Don't want to be greedy, but we can try to find a shilling. We'll have the set of silver. On we go. Okay. Well, that's the sixpence scrape there. I've filled it in, and I'm getting another mid tone there, which could be a halfpenny. That's the King George V halfpenny. Sort of give those uh, mid tones. Let's move the machine out of the way more. Then again, it could be a 303 bullet. But, there we go, look at that. It's opening. Two coin spill. I thought the detector was making some strange signals there. It was giving multiple signals, that's why. Okay, I'll get a date off this little hope and uh, be back. Well, that explains the mid turn. Is it, a, it is a KG5 hope in 1912. So uh, some child has dropped a couple old coins here. Uh, a little pocket spill. King George V. Lovely condition once again. Uh, like I said, reasonably high rainfall here, but it's well-drained soil. So the coins, uh, these bronze coins, lovely. 1912. Okay, I'll just keep recheck the hole, and might be some more here. Okay, haven't filled in the holes. It was a sixpence there. The halfpenny just above it. Just swung a little bit to the left. Getting a lovely reading on the machine. Just there. So, we'll have another look at this one. It's ringing a bit higher, so it's either going to be a penny. I don't think it's going to be a halfpenny. The way that's reading, it won't be far down. Still in there. You can see this really. Oh, there you go, it's a penny. Is that another Commonwealth penny? Or is it a kangaroo? I'm not sure. I'll clean it and uh, I'll get back. So that's a three coin spill. Keep checking this. Okay, that one's a 43 kangaroo. Bit of fast paced action here, so I'll just, I've, I've, I haven't checked the hole again, so we'll just keep swinging around this area. Hopefully there's more in this spill. Back soon. Okay, holes are remaining open at the moment. I'll fill them in shortly. That was the 43 penny. We've got the sixpence and the halfpenny. I don't know if you can call it a coin spill if you can come another three or four feet. And we've got another silver. Beautiful little threepence. Had a bit of trouble pinpointing that. Tried a live dig but it failed miserably so I just uh, had to find it. So there we go. I'll uh, get a date and uh, be back with the uh, information on that coin. Well there's that threepence. She's been around the traps a while. It's uh, 1910. Edward the Seventh. Fairly worn. 
but uh, that's the first silver mintage uh, of Australian coins, 1910, from the Royal Mint in London. But uh, what a beautiful bit of silver. Well, this is uh, sort of kind of an extended coin spell. We'll just, uh, I haven't finished it yet, there may be more. Well, the spell's still producing, that's the area they. Those other four coins I just got, I just got and it's a really deep target, this one. Dodgy signal from the top and a halfpenny come out of the bottom. So, uh, oh, it's another King George the uh, fifth. Good one. Okay, we'll get a date off it. It's a common halfpenny. Good one. We'll get a date and be back. So that was quite a deep target. I'll have to um, I'll really slow down in here because some of these coins are a fair way down and the signals aren't real good at the surface with the grass. Is at KG5 1927. Once again, a mid tone but a deep target that one, so that was uh, I'm pleased to find that one. Okay, I'll keep searching in this uh, extended coin spill. It's more of a coin spray, I suppose, but uh, we're getting out a bit now from the centre of the spill, but um, still getting coins, which is good. Okay, another halfpenny from the little coin spray. It's another KG5. I'll uh, subtitle a date on it and um, put up some details on that coin. Good one. Okay, I'm just uh, this whole area is probably about uh, 10 feet by 10 feet where I'm getting these coins, so um, may have been a little messing area, who knows? On we go. Okay, we're still in the coin patch, lovely signal here. With a high tone, so it should be pretty good. We'll just give you a live dig on it. We can get him out. Catch in the heap. Pretty high tone. Sounds promising. See if I can get it this time. Some of these live digs. Without the pro pro pointer. A bit dodgy. Like this one's turning out. Okay, oh there it is. Another sixpence. I'll clean it up. Sterling silver that one, and uh, we'll get a date off it. Well, there she is, a lovely 42 sixpence. Uh, another sterling, it might got be a D or an S on that mid mark. King George VI. Still in the same patch. Okay, we've got a big signal here. Still in the coin patch. Bring it up nice and high, that one. So we'll try to um, come up with a live dig again and see what we get. Might be another penny the way it's ringing, it's pretty high tone. Still in there. Okay. It's in the Malachi. Could be a coin. Could be a little brass uh, stud though, but the way it's ringing up. Oh, a ripper. It's an army button. Good one. No wonder it was such a high tone. Another little brass button. That's a breast pocket button. Ripper. Good one. Okay, well, here's one of those big old camp, camp kitchens, the remains of the uh, oven for the uh, divisional um, camp. This one's got a substantial uh, concrete chimney made out of a pipe. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, would have been a very, uh, obviously, high volume of traffic. Army blokes all through here um, for quite a few years. Like I said, the, they didn't, uh, they're quite substantial structures. They weren't temporary. Um, the buildings around, they would have had a timber floor and maybe canvas sides and iron roof, but uh, that's one of the old stoves. And there's another one actually, about 50 metres into the bush there, there's another one of these. Not quite as big. So this is a camp, uh, obviously the kitchen uh, messing area. And up to our left, that's the area we've been hunting up in this area, further up the hill. Um, and that was possibly a medical area I was in because I was getting all those uh, cream tubes and things. So um, I don't really know what they were. I've got one, I'll examine it and see if I can get some information off it. So anyway, that was our uh, little relic hunt, another military relic hunt in the um, World War II camps. I hope you enjoyed that. We found some uh, nice little finds there today, a few nice coins and um, military relics. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, happy hunting everyone on your next trip out. Um, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.
Thank you.